all I know that people, people are continually saying, oh, sure, Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, taught nonviolence. The Sermon on the Mount is nonviolence. He taught love your, love your enemies. Uh, but I'm a Catholic or I'm a Methodist or something. And, um, and uh, they say, but we teach the just war. We know the church teaches the just war, and therefore we're following that. And therefore, we can go to war in Afghanistan or Iraq or what have you. Well, that's really uh, uh, represents a pretty, pretty serious problem um, because um, over and above the fact that there are problems with the just war itself, uh, which we may or may not go into if you'd like, uh, no one knows what the just war theory is of the church. There is one, that's for sure. Uh, but no one knows it. Now, my church, the Catholic church, I would say that maybe, maybe one in 100,000 people know what the Catholic church's standards of the just war theory are. One in 100,000. Why don't they know it? Everyone calls on it. They say, oh, we're, we're Christians, but our church says there's a just war. So we go to war. But the church doesn't say that a war occurs and you can go to war. What the church teaches is, is Jesus' teachings are teachings of nonviolent love of friends and enemies. And then it sets up this exception to them it calls the just war theory that permits people to go to war if the conditions of the just war theory are met. Well, you know, they're not being met because they're not being known. And they're not known because they're not being taught. And they're not being taught, quite frankly, they're not being taught because the people responsible for teaching them, the priests and the bishops and the ministers, uh, the church leadership, intentionally does not teach the standards of the just war theory. No more than it teaches Jesus' teachings of nonviolent love of friends and enemies. It just tells people there is such a thing. And why doesn't the church leadership teach it? My suspicion is they don't teach it because they know in their hearts there is no war that could ever meet those standards. And certainly there's no war that has ever met those standards. So they don't teach them because they'd be in trouble with the local politicians if they taught them. They'd be in trouble with, the, with, with even the congregation if they taught them. So they just, they just say that we are a just war church. And people go to war on the basis of that. Well, you know, that's like saying it's morally correct to, to take out an appendix. And then go and cut someone up without knowing the standards there are for taking out an appendix. The result of that is you've murdered someone. You've taken a life, unjustifiably. You said there were conditions, you knew there were conditions that had to be met, and you didn't meet them. And therefore, the person dies. Well, so also. There are standards to the just war theory. They're, they're not loose, they're not ununderstandable. In fact, in the Catholic Church, for those of you who are Catholic, the stand, it is specifically said, the standards must be applied strictly. Because in the Catholic Church, anytime you're dealing with the destruction of a person or bringing large-scale pain on a person, you have to be close to, you have to be close to absolute certainty to have moral certainty. You have to have 75% certainty that what you're doing is what you should be doing, is the right way to do it, it has to be done. That is, it meets these standards. 
Now you tell me, you, now you tell me, how can you meet standards that you've never been taught, that have never been explained to you? How can you apply them? And remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about taking human lives on a large scale. And people saying, I can do it because my church says I can do it because they teach a just war. They don't teach a just war. They teach if these standards are met, the person can go to war if that's the person's choice. And the killing that they do in war will not be unjustified killing. That is, will not be murder. Murder, by definition, is unjustified killing. And so when the, when the leadership refuses to teach Jesus' teachings of nonviolent love of friends and enemies, and then refuses to, to teach the standards for the exception to that, what are people left with? They're left with nothing except a government telling them they want to go to war. They want them to go to war. They must go to war. And you people know as well as I know something that is as old as, I believe, Aeschylus. The first casualty of war is truth. Governments lie when war is on the horizon. They lie anyway, but when war is on the horizon, it's big time lying. So where's the Christian left? He's not left following Jesus' teachings of nonviolent love of friends and enemies. He's not left following any just war theory that, that the church teaches. The Christian is left out there killing people, not knowing whether it's justified, unjustified, not knowing whether it meets the standards of his own church or her own church, just killing people. And that has been the condition of Christianity and the Christian churches for 1,800 years. Just war theory exists as a theory in the church, not as a dogma, as a theory. But even as a theory, it's not taught. And ideas that you don't have are ideas that you can't apply. And my problem is, my problem is, that I hold the bishops accountable and the priests accountable for not teaching what they're supposed to teach. Jesus' teaching of nonviolent love of friends and enemies or the only other alternative to it, Christian just war theory, with standards which must be met with moral certainty if a Christian is ever allowed to go to war, and if his killing or her killing in war is ever to be considered anything but murder or mass murder.